We're back with another Central News Center. I'm Cole. And I'm Triana. First up is Megan with March for Dimes. On February 6th, Central's FBLA walked laps around Central's track to raise money for March of Dimes. FBLA is Future Business Leaders of America. Each FBLA member gains sponsors who donate 10 cents for each lap they walked. March of Dimes is a foundation that helps mothers and babies in need. Over the course of an hour, the FBLA chapter raised over $800 in donations. Are you an FBLA member? Yes, I am. I've been an FBLA for three years now. Did you participate in March of Dimes? I didn't walk, but I did um, find donations for it. What's coming up for FBLA? Well, in like two months, we have our state leadership conference, so hopefully we'll, a lot of us will qualify to go to nationals this summer. Are you an FBLA? Uh, yes, I am. What is March of Dimes? Uh, March of Dimes is the support of premature babies. Do you think it's good that our chapter is supporting March of Dimes? Uh, I think it's highly good for our chapter. Um, also, I think our chapter could um, greatly be recognized for it. Did you know that March of Dimes responded to Grand Fork Central FBLA on Twitter? No, I did not. They did. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have a movie review of Bohemian Rhapsody and The Incredibles 2 by Lu Lukash. Thank you guys. My name is Lukash and I will review for you uh, two videos, two movies, which recently came out and they are Bohemian Rhapsody and The Incredibles. Too. So, if you are a fan of Queen, you're a fan of rock, for sure you know the song called Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Bohemian Rhapsody is an exciting story about the band Queen. His music and unusual vocal Freddie Mercury played by Remy Malek. You can know him from the TV series Mr. Robot. This movie breaks stereotypes and conventions one worship of countless fans, the film shows the genius career of the band, which thanks to the cool songs and revolutionary sound, climbed to the heights of celebrity until the scandalous lifestyle of Mercury didn't put everything into question. Triumphant return of the band during the concert on Live Aid the movie is amazing, and thanks to this movie, I learned everything about the Queen, about Freddie Mercury. This movie tells exactly uh, from the beginning of the band's history. Just every rock fan should watch this. I rate this film for strong four and a half stars because I just missed something in this movie. Okay, another movie. This is the second part of the famous children's movie under the title Incredibles. Incredibles 2 is a continuation of the series where superheroes have to hide from the public because the superheroes are illegal. So why Bob Park struggles with children? His wife Helen, known as Elastic Girl, fulfills her aspiration in the anti-polective country and try to bring back superheroes a good name. The film is super funny, among other things because of the kid named Jack, where we discover his powers, so that's why it's funny for me. It's a great movie for the evening, evening with the family. This is really super movie, uh, trust me guys. I rate this film as strong for, for the story, uh, for the fun, for the humor. Okay, thank you. That was everything. Wow, that seemed really interesting. I might have to go watch that. We have Trinity with some more movie reviews on 1922 and The Wedding Singer. Thanks guys. Today I will be reviewing the movies 1922 and The Wedding Singer. The Wedding Singer was made in 1998, stars Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore with an hour and 36 minute runtime. Robbie Hart, the wedding singer, played by Adam Sandler, is left at the altar at his own wedding and becomes his own worst nightmare. Just when he thinks he's never going to find love again, Julia, played by Drew Barrymore, walks onto the scene. The only problem is, Julia is already engaged to a man named Glenn. So unless Robbie can pull off the performance of a lifetime, the girl of his dreams will be gone forever. I rate this movie 6 out of 5 stars. I love this movie so much. It's hilarious. Adam Sandler is amazing. And it's just the greatest thing in the world. 
but in the Rotten Tomatoes category, it only got 68%, which I 100% do not agree with, but that's their opinion. 1922 is a thriller drama mystery movie based on a novella written by Stephen King. It was made only last year, has an hour and 41 minute runtime, stars Thomas Jane, Molly Parker, and Dylan Schmidt. The basis behind this movie is a man who loves his land and his son more than anything else. His wife, on the other hand, does not appreciate the farm life and would rather open a dress shop in town, taking, her, taking Wilfred's only son with her. And Wilfred does not appreciate this idea in the slightest, so he decides the only way to get rid of this problem is to get rid of his wife. So, with the help of his son, Henry James, played by Dylan Schmid, they murder his wife, Arlette James, played by Molly Parker, in the dead of night, and throw her body into a well in the backyard. Little did they know that this, was, that this would attract thousands upon thousands of rats to their living establishment and spark the haunting neither of them expected. I would rate this movie four and, four and a half out of five stars because in the beginning it was a little hard to follow, but once you get into the story, it's really good. The Rotten Tomatoes community decided to agree with me this time and gave the movie 82%. I would definitely recommend watching both of these movies. Thanks for tuning in. Back to you guys. Next up is Brandon on Valentine's Day. Hi, I'm Brandon Harkin. I'm going to be at the People at Central what they think about Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, I feel like it's a very mild holiday. Like, it's there, but there's not really a big solid way to celebrate it other than bringing the valentines and the candy to each other which has become really weird Perfect. what i think about valentine's day valentine's day is a scam by companies to get your money for chocolate when you can just love your partner all day and it's okay great now you know how central action feels about valentine's day thanks for those who answered my questions and it's back to you Next up, we have Carter with uh, Manny Machado Free Agency. Hopefully, it goes to the Yankees. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Carter Swanson. I'll be interviewing a few people about the Manny Machado Free Agency. Manny Machado is a shortstop who played last season with the LA Dodgers. There are currently a few teams interested in him. Um, he's looking for the most money possible for the shortest deal. Driven to deep center. Manny Machado! Bang. First Dodger! Is that your name? Megan Peck. Okay, do you know anything about the Manny Machado free agency? Yep. He uh, costs a lot of money and it only wants $300 million. So, and he's a shortstop. So, New York Yankees offered him $275 million for a 7 to 8 year contract. The Padres offered him, they're, they're from San Diego by the way, yep. um, they offered him 300 million over H tenders. Which deal do you think is better? I think because Padres, they just got that good climate and San Diego is a really nice place to be. So um, it's probably the best deal for him. They sound like a better team. Do you think his performance quality will rise or decline? You know, I think that the, what's the other team he used an offer from? The Yankees. The Yankees? Well, they just have a lot of other good players that just, they might push him to become a better shortstop, but they just won't play with him very well. And so I think that San Diego, they'll just be, they'll just be good. <laughs> uh, state your name. Uh, I'm Zach Larson. So Zach, have you heard about the uh, Manny Machado free agent team? Yes, I have. So what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I think he's just looking for a lot of money. I don't think he's looking for a specific team or anywhere he really wants to go. So basically, there's about five or six teams that are interested in him. The Yankees, Padres, Angels, Phillies, obviously Dodgers, and then the Giants. Yeah. So the Yankees reportedly offered him $275 million for eight, seven year deal. Uh, Padres offered him three hundred million for an eight-year, ten-year deal. So far, those are his two best offers. Who do you think he's going to go with? I think he's going with the Padres. What makes you think that? Money. Money. <laughs> Lots of money. Um, do you think Machado will improve from this point on, or will he kind of go down now? 
Uh, I think he's just going to level out here, and then he'll start to go downhill at his age. You it's think uh, 300 million is realistic for Machado? Now with another sports topic, Sam with Super Bowl thoughts. It wasn't a really good Super Bowl. <laughs> no, it was not. Hi, my name is Sam Shadell, Central News Center, and today we're going to hear some thoughts and opinions on the Super Bowl. Did you agree that Julian El did you agree with Julian Elman winning MVP? Um, you know, yes, probably. I agree. Who did you want to be in the Super Bowl? Did you want those two teams to be in it? Um, you know, probably would have liked it if uh, the Eagles were in it again this year, but you know, it is what it is. All right, thank you for interviewing. You're welcome. Who did you want to win the Super Bowl? I wanted the Rams to win the Super Bowl. All right. What did you think of it? Um, even though it lacked some offense, I thought it was pretty entertaining, I guess. Um, who, do, you, do you wish it was a higher scoring game? That might have made it more interesting, I suppose, to most people, but I don't mind defense, so I'm okay with that. The thing that would have made it more interesting if there was like a team I cared about in it. Well, those were the thoughts of the, some of the people here at Central on the Super, thoughts on the Super Bowl. Um, my thoughts, I I watched it. I thought it was a pretty good game. I liked I liked I liked the defense. Um, I like how it was more of a def defensive game. But I probably wish the Rams would won. Tired of the Patriots winning it a lot, and uh, I wish the Vikings were in Super Bowl. Next up, we have Jaden with some scholarship opportunity information for seniors. My name is Kyle Hoagland. I'm a senior here at Central High School. Okay, and then do you know where to find scholarships? Um, I find them either online or in the counselor's office. And do you know where you want to go for college and what do you want to be? I'm really looking at UND right now. I think I want to do something in the computer field, maybe be a programmer. That sounds like a good path for me. Perfect. And do you know how to fill out scholarships? You know, I really can't say that I do know how to fill them out myself. But get some help from my counselor probably. Thank you so much, Kyle. Yes. Okay, um, I'm Chloe Whiteside. I'm a senior here at Central. Do you know the difference between a scholarship and a grant? Yes, I do. I know that grants are just money that is given to you, and in scholarships, you usually have to put in a little bit more work and effort to do applications or essays. Thank you so much, Chloe. Mm -hmm. I'm Ella Knudsen, and I'm in grade 9. I'm Michaela Patlin, and I'm in grade 9. And Do you know how to get letters of recommendations? Mm -hmm. Ask your teachers. Yes, there you go. You got it. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. Wow, thanks, Jaden. Thanks for the information. Now we have Lewis with how and why to join FBLA. Please state your name. I am Miss Cleveland. How do people join FBLA? So people, if they want to join FBLA, usually at the beginning of the year, in our classes, Mr. Lennon and I will do some recruiting. So we'll talk about it in our classes. We'll put up posters maybe around school. A lot of times kids will tell other kids about it. And so then we will give you some documents to fill out, a medical release and a code of conduct, and you will fill those out and turn them in with your $10 dues, and then we'll be able to register you. you but really anybody can join in grades 9 through 12, and I would say if you have an interest in business, that usually, usually helps. What are the benefits to joining FBLA? Like, what are the benefits of in college in the future? Okay, I would say when you're first in it in high school, there's some benefits. So networking with other kids, so meeting other people, um, even just getting to know your own, the other students at Grand Forks Central better, traveling with them. Um, getting to travel is another really cool benefit. Even though state's only in Bismarck, sometimes it moves to Fargo, uh, there's an opportunity to attend nationals if you do really well at state. Um, and there's always a different location in the U.S. that you would be able to go to for that. Uh, and that's really exciting. So I would say networking. I would say just having these experiences from traveling, from networking, from learning about business can really help you when you're deciding on a career field. Uh, it can help you having benefits to joining. Are there any other things that you want to say? Just join FBLA. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up we have Nicholas with the postseason basketball interviews. I wonder how they did this season. Not too bad, but let's check it out. Hi, I'm Nick Swanson, and this is Sam Strandell. Nice to meet you, Sam Strandell. Nice to meet you. Too. <laughs> um, Sam Strandell played for Grand Fork Central C Squad basketball team. That's so, true. Sam, I just have a few questions to ask you about the season. Um, 
How many point or what was your highest scoring game? <laughs> uh, I think uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty high. Yeah. Um. So, how many games did your team win this year? Well, uh, we're uh, still have the EDC tournament coming up, but so far we've Big won tournament. uh nine games. Nine games. Yeah. That's pretty good. Do um, yeah. you know how many you lost? Eight. Eight games. Yeah. So you're positive. Awesome. Um. Sam, what were some season highlights this year for you personally? Uh, probably going undefeated against Red River and um, just yeah. like away games. Away games are pretty fun. Away games? Yeah. Um, do you, is there any team highlights that you would like to point out? Anything that was really cool that your team did this year? Um, not specifically. Okay. So, well, thank you for doing this interview with me. No problem. Had a great time. Yeah. This is Cole Martin. He plays, nice to meet you, Cole. Nice to meet you, too. He plays for the freshman basketball team. How long with him? Yep. And um, I'm just going to be asking him a few questions, just as normal. So, Cole, what were some season highlights for you? I mean, I dropped 20 against Wapton, but... 20 against Wapton? Yep. Anything you'd like to add on to that? Like what, four blocks I gave? Oh, uh, four blocks. I, if I seem to remember right, that was your first game, right? On the second. Second of the season, 20 points. That's pretty good. Yes. Congratulations. Thank um, you. Was there any uh, highlights just for the team in general? I mean, honestly not. Like, we had a lot to work on. We didn't, the coaches didn't really provide us enough time to improve or the right situations to improve our skills and develop the right ways to play with each other. Ah, that's so, right. So, yeah. Um, so, how many games did you win this year? Uh, what did we get, two? One? <laughs> one. One against our crosstown rivalry, Red River, though. Yeah, those kids are losers. Yeah. I, um, and do you know how many games we lost, or did you not keep track? I didn't keep track of that. You didn't keep track. It's totally fine. Yeah. Um, just, so is there anything you think that the team could work on uh, as you've gone through the season? Anything you've noticed that our team hasn't done very well on? Honestly, like everything. Everything? Mm, passing, especially passing, is a huge killer. What, like 40 turnovers a game we're averaging? Uh, shooting, I mean, like nobody can shoot. I mean, we never really got the chance to practice shooting in practice. Once again, we just kind of worked on passing, but still, like, nobody was doing anything better. Wow, I really like that answer. Um, anything, any uh, cosmetic improvements you think? Oh, maybe? yeah, the jerseys. The jerseys? Oh, yeah, for sure. Better, better ones. Yeah, good. I noticed that too. I don't think the jerseys were very good. Well, Cole, it was great having you. Hey, yeah. thanks for watching the video. Hope you learned a lot about the basketball season this year. Thank you, and goodbye. That was our Central News Center. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure to come again. Bye.